As a video editor, we were always trying to use captions to match what is said in the video. But the method creators use to captivate the viewer's attention is a little description in the beginning of what the video is going to be about. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. And without further ado, let's get straight into the software. So here we got the talking head video. Here are the settings I'm using. Let's hit OK. First thing I'm gonna do is head over to the rectangle tool and grab rounded rectangle tool. Now with nothing selected, I'm gonna create a frame like that. I'm gonna recenter, put it under the chin. Then what we're gonna do is actually leave it like it is. So white colors on both. So make sure the stroke and the fill are turned on. Now what we're gonna do is head over to the properties, open up fill, and we're gonna change the opacity to 10%. Now we're gonna head over to the stroke and here in the dashes we're gonna hit that plus. And then here we're gonna bump up the value to around like 60. Yeah, it looks pretty cool to me. So now in that frame I want to describe what the video is going to be about. So for this I'm gonna hit Control plus T. I'm gonna type in how I save, change the color to white, hit OK, then adjust it a little bit, duplicate the layer. Then I'm gonna type in hours on editing. Then we're just gonna probably decrease the font size. And also I'm gonna duplicate it one more time and type in in three easy steps. As for the last text, I'm gonna change the font to Gabriola. Then I'm gonna turn off the caps and I'm gonna bump up the font size. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'd probably bump it up even more like that. Then I'm gonna hit S and we're gonna just scale it down a little bit. I'm gonna put it somewhere here, select them all adjust a little bit. So the next thing I want to do is create a little bit of separation because it clearly blends in with the background. So for this, we're gonna add the effect called drop shadow. We're gonna make it more intense by changing the opacity to 100%, distance to zero, and then the softness to 150. Now I'm gonna probably duplicate it and change the opacity to 20%. Let's select both of them, hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V to all the others. Okay, seems good to me. Now as for that text, we're gonna use the technique I explained in one of the videos, which is hitting Ctrl D, then adding deep glow, you could use regular glow, that's fine as well. And we're gonna grab the rectangle tool and we're gonna cut it in half. Then hit F on the keyboard and bump up the mask feather. Now I'm gonna select them both, pre-compose, call it in three easy steps. And we're gonna probably add tint effect to this. Now we're gonna head over to map white 2 and I'm gonna change it to a different color. Mm, that looks pretty cool to me. I'm gonna hit OK. Then as for the frame, I feel like we need to squeeze it in. So I'm gonna uncheck constraint proportions. And we're gonna do it like that. I would probably just bump up the X and it seems fine. For this one, we're gonna change the scale to 105 to just make it stand out a little bit more. And then I'm gonna decrease the scale for the first text. And then we're gonna select four upper layers and I'm gonna pre-compose them. Call it frame, hit enter, and we're just gonna create a keyframe for position. Then drag it forward and we're gonna slide it in from the bottom. I'm gonna select both, easy ease, then go to the graph editor, fit all graphs, and we're just gonna squeeze the peak to the left. Okay, that's way too slow, so we're just gonna drag that point somewhere here. Let's see now. Maybe a bit more. Okay, I'm good with this. I'm gonna go into the layer, and here what I would like to add is a new adjustment layer. Then to this, we're gonna add light sweep, and let me just rename it so everything is clear. We're gonna change the direction to 30 or maybe even 45. And now if you play around with the center with that point, we're gonna achieve different looks. So for this, we need to make that light sweep pass by. So I'm gonna keyframe center, hit U, move here, and we're just gonna do it like that. Should be fine. I'm gonna select both, easy ease, go to the graph editor and do the same thing as before. Let's see now. Pretty, pretty cool. Let's just change the settings. I'm gonna bump up the sweep intensity to 50 and I'm gonna bump up the width as well. Let's just make it faster by squeezing in the keyframes. All right, and now we need to see it here. Okay, it's too early. So for this, we're just gonna extend that keyframe. Pretty, pretty cool. And one more thing we could do in the frame is creating a new adjustment layer right here, then renaming it to Turbulent. I'm gonna add the effect called Turbulent Displays and we don't really want that look, so we're gonna change it to like 12 and then the size to 12 as well. I'm gonna open up Evolution Options, Alt-click Random Seat, type in Time, asterisk let's say six okay looks pretty good so basically this is gonna give us that jittery look it's just gonna make that frame pop i'm gonna go back and here what we really need to do is create a new adjustment layer then adding transform keyframing scale hitting you moving forward and getting closer to the character or to the frame now i'm gonna easy ease go to the graph editor and we're just gonna create a mid graph by squeezing in the peak that's way too sharp so we're just gonna soften it out Pretty cool. But instead of that, I'm just gonna grab something from my pack. I'm gonna head over to the shake, full HD, vertical shake. I'm gonna copy this 
and paste it here. And that way we're gonna have that weekly screen, which is pretty cool. And then in order to make it pop even more, we need to actually add two effects to our main video over here. So I'm gonna add the exposure and also the Gaussian blur. I've already showed you that technique before. So here we're gonna hit the stopwatch here as well, hit U, move forward. And then we're gonna decrease the amount to minus two and we're gonna change the blurriness to like 50. And that way, as you can notice, the text is standing out way more. I'm just gonna adjust the timing, easy the keyframes. And then once the viewer had enough time to read that through, we're just gonna zoom out. And also since we're zooming out, I kind of want to fade it out. So we're just gonna create opacity keyframes. And then we need to select these, copy and paste here. Then we're gonna right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. Okay, I'll probably squeeze it in. We could also easy the keyframes over here and do it like that. Low adjustment. So that's what we have, but the thing I can live without is motion blur. So let's just turn it on here. And that's way smoother now. And this is basically giving an insight to the viewer what he can expect from the video. It's a great way to captivate the viewer because once he reads that, then he wants to know what are the next steps. So it can be anything that kind of leaves an open question. All right, so that'll be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, guys.